the real interest of our group is how we make decisions. And of course, making a decision means acquiring information, understanding its relevance, weighing up the evidence favoring taking one action or another, and then finally committing to a decision. And then of course what we like to do if we're an intelligent animal is to learn from our decisions. So hopefully we can make better ones in the future. One of the ways that we uh, go about understanding how we make decisions is to measure precisely what people and other animals use in terms of visual information to guide uh, subsequent decisions. And so we uh, utilize uh, what are now known as uh, eye tracking goggles. And these are basically glasses that have a small camera pointed out at the world, which gives a view from what could be seen from that individual's perspective, and then either one or two infrared cameras that can track the pupil and the cornea of the eye. Eye tracking with our lab dog. It's a Toby recording. We have for a long time uh, studied how people uh, evaluate each other by measuring their eye movements. So we know that when we look at another individual, uh, we tend to look at their face and uh, in, in fact even more closely inspect their eyes and this gives us a lot of information about whether that person is paying attention to you, whether they like you, and this can give you really important information about how to proceed in the next interaction with them. This tendency to really be interested in and, and spend time looking at other people, and especially their eyes, actually turns out to be impaired uh, in people with uh, various neurodevelopmental and neuropsychiatric disorders, uh, chief among them autism and schizophrenia. So uh, we hope to be able to use eye tracking as a means to uh, identify individuals who might be at risk of developing later autism or schizophrenia. And most recently here, we've gotten really excited about the potential to employ eye tracking in more business-related applications. So this is a great opportunity to take this technology out of the lab and into consumer environments where we can explore the effectiveness of advertising, we can explore product displays, we can look basically at how people are using information about their environment to guide purchasing decisions, etc. And so many people have trouble making good decisions, and in fact, there are clinical conditions in which people have severe impairments in making good decisions. So if we can understand something about how our brains decide, how we use information to guide our choices, we might be able to help people make better decisions.